person. Would you go into politics? Do you want to go into politics? I mean, somebody's here said, Petri, why don't you put yourself forward for election as an MP rather than simply criticising? Uh, no, thank you. I, I actually no, I would not want to go anywhere near that. I, I think I'd be pretty rubbish as well, to be honest. But at least I know. At least I know I'd be rubbish, so I wouldn't go for the job. At least I don't go, oh, I'm going to be great, get into the job and then be rubbish. I know I wouldn't be very good. You wouldn't want me as a politician, so I wouldn't go anywhere near it. It's not for me. But who is it for? Who should our politicians be? The thing that, that I find incredible is the bunch we've got at the moment do not seem to have a clue, not a Scooby, what life is really, actually, honestly like. No idea. Five here on clothing bags and school uniforms. That's it on the Lib Dem so far. Maybe they're saving the really big, weighty stuff for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 0845 603973. Uh, loads of text coming in on this as well. Not the least bit flattering towards our own piece. Um, Secretary Ira Hindu, the minister, pays his wife 45 grand. They need a secretary, but few would be paid that much. A uh, hundred thousand pound flat rate, not a penny more. No subsidised food, nothing. And they should be in and out. The same holidays as everyone else. They are absolute holidays. That's fantastic. And what you mean by that is to give them a pay rise. And I'd like to talk about pay rise after the next election. It wasn't there from, uh, they're roughly on about 64,000 ish at the moment, and it will go up, the people are saying, to 75,000. Now, just, just ruminate on this before we go, before we go to the news. That David Cameron has stated that politics mustn't cost any more money. All right, so if they want a pay rise, they're going to have to find that money without it costing you and me more. They're going to sack a number of cleaners and low-grade staff. Probably get cheaper contractors in to do those jobs to fund their pay rises. Give me a call. Tell me what you think about today's lot of MPs. 0845-6060-973. This is LBC 97.3. I'm Petri and it's now 1.30. And here with the latest news headlines is Philip Chow. It's hoped new guidance being issued to schools in England will cut the cost of uniforms. Schools Minister David Law wants parents to be able to shop around and branding to be kept to a minimum. The Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Danny Alexander, has defended the government's help to buy scheme. Earlier this week, Business Secretary Vince Cable said her plans should be reconsidered. Israel's Prime Minister says he hopes a US-Russian deal over Syria will result in the complete destruction of the Text 84850, tweet at LBC973. This is London's biggest conversation with Petri Hoskin. Hello, very good afternoon. It is Petri here with you until four o'clock. Uh, many of you on the text are really surprised at what I said about Shepherd's Bush being considered far enough out of town, far enough from Westminster for the local MP to have a second home. The MP that told me that was the, the, the wonderful um, Labour MP, Andy Stoughton, um, who lives not far from me. And we were having a chat one day, and he went, yeah, I, I'm entitled to a second home. I nearly fell off my feet. I went, what? I should, I should speak to LBC and see if, <laughs> see if I can get them to buy me a flat. Near Leicester Square. 
Because obviously, Shepherd's Bush to the Westminster, that's a trek, isn't it? Late at night, they have to work in the evening. I'm not joking, that is still the case. He doesn't have a second home, by the way. If he's like you and me, he'll get on a bus or a tube or a cab back all the way to Shepherd's Bush. Uh, this text is coming on that saying, if Shepherd's Bush is too far for MPs to travel to Westminster, surely they can travel like anyone else. We have to travel from Kent to the city to work Monday to Friday. We're not subsidised with anything. In fact, you're not. You're overcharged for, for London transport, as we found out that our Oyster cards are the most expensive in the world this week. In the world! Uh, why should MPs uh, get anything special? I agree. They're doing it, they're supposed to be doing a job. A job, like you and me, a job. And don't tell, they, they always go, what is that going to them? Your mind's not either, get over it. Most people's aren't, really. A lot of us work shifts, don't we? Ridiculous. Bill is in Colchester. Hello, Bill. Yeah, I just, uh, actually, I'd just like to come up and I'd just like to inform you on a few things that I've picked up that I was a bit um, surprised at. Um, well, you know, we had the, uh, the situation where, uh, where Mr. Bell, who had um, held a constituency meeting, I don't know if you remember it, for 14 years, and when he was asked why he didn't turn up for any constituency meetings, he said, uh, well, you get a lot of trouble, he said, with constituents. Well, anyway, I phoned up Westminster to find out what obligations they have, and uh, I was told that, well, you, every five years you can, uh, you've got the right to vote. Well, I phoned up my own MP around about six times. Uh, he never spoke to me and uh, never had a phone call back from him. So I had a bit of a to and, a to and fro with, his, uh, with a person who answered the phone for him, um, probably at Westminster. And he said, I said, look, you know and I know that he could, he could simply blow raspberries at me down the phone. He doesn't do any work and he doesn't have to do any work. He said, oh, he does a lot of work. I said, well, give me an example. He said, oh, he does lots. I said, well, if he does lots, give me one example. What does he have to do? He said, well, you tell me what you know about MPs. I said, I'll tell you what I know about MPs. I said, they get elected every four to five years, and they don't have to do a thing. He said, give me an example. I said, well, one is Bell, that you know didn't have a constituency meeting for 14 years. I said, and the other one was somebody who dressed up as a monkey and become mayor. I said, and at the end of the term, they said he made, has made absolutely no difference. Because no matter who you elect, he has no power as a single person. And it's irrelevant. And the only thing they're interested in is... Um, is expenses. I mean, I watched the programme, Patrick. This is this is the most uh, uh, you know comical bit about it. They they teach MPs how to smile. They say because if you don't smile at an MP, uh, 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 a, cons a potential cons constituent that you despise, uh, he won't vote for you. So you have to smile. So they go on smiling classes. Uh, this is how genuine our MPs are. The reality is, of course, they do nothing and. Uh, that they don't have to do anything, and the only so I I said to this research this character on the phone. So how do I get rid of him then? He said, Well, you don't vote for him at the next election. I said, and That's democracy, is it? He said, Well, you've got the ultimate say, haven't you? He said, You've got the vote. Well, this is this is what <laughs> this is what they tell the people. You have the right to get rid of them at the next election. So any old dumber can do the job, and it, you need no qualifications whatsoever. You don't need to be able to read or write. You don't need. You could just. You could have been released from us an assigned, uh, uh, you know, an assigned asylum. And um, as so long as you're on the voters' register, then you put your name forward and you put your deposit up there, and you get ten signatures to say that you know you you, you can stand, which is ten constituency signatures uh, from the full man. You back in your town hall. You're on the ballot, folks, and if you can get more votes than the other character, you've been duly elected to serve for that term of office. This is the people we've got in office. Well, as long as they've been on a smiling course. Well, this is quite yeah. that like they do it on, on a regular basis. They, have, they, have, they go on these courses, it's like an acting course, and they teach them how to smile. I was watching a program, and I'll tell you what they do, and they say, no, you, you, you're not looking to see it, they were saying. So you've got <laughs> hey, to use it's a joke, knock it. There's loads of ex-journalist friends of mine who are making a very good living out of these media <laughs> courses. <laughs> Don't knock it. And it may be my future as well, Bill. So if we like not smiling classes, I could teach them how to smile. On the other side of their faces. Um, Jonathan is in Made Available. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, there. Hi. I was just trying to make the point of uh, the travel in the second home. I, I think it's, it's brilliant that, um, as you said, the, the constituent in um, 
He shakes his fish, doesn't have a second. Um, and yeah, I think he's a decent bloke. He's entitled to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think he's, he's obviously a decent bloke. And it, it, why don't they have to adhere to the things that we do, you know? Um, I was uh, recently in the um, in the job centre and I was unemployed. And um, I was told that I was expected to travel up to 90 minutes on public transport, so that's that would have been buses and trains, which is it's fine to, to go and find a job. Um, so the second push I can't imagine is, is you know, as far as 90 minutes. Um, no, on the, on the, on the central line, it's I think it's 17 